Welcome to another exciting video. Uh, this time around, well, uh, last time around, <clears throat> for those who have been following along in sequence, I did mention that I was going to build an antenna tuner. Um, and I have. Here it is. It's, uh, it's done. Input, output, BNC. Um, all nice and tidy in a metal box, metal container, and very simple. Just two controls in the front. This is your band selector switch. Okay, and we have, I think, uh, what was it, seven positions, seven taps on the coil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, roughly 160 to 10 meters give or take uh, and then a tuning capacitor for fine tuning um, this is the kind uh, that just spins around and around so you don't run into an end stop it just keeps repeating and revolving um, so just to kind of give you a look at it um, the design I use is very simple. It's, it's what's known as an L network. Okay, so the input comes to this switch. The switch then sends to the tap. Um, so wherever we start the signal is is the length of the you know in, the inductor essentially. Where you can shorten the inductor by shortening the the tapping point all the way up to just having this little bit this is the minimal amount of inductance that uh, can be had and then that feeds into this uh, tuning condenser capacitor capacitor and um, one one side the actually the side that the uh, knob is attached to is also grounded in two spots. I just did that just I don't know just because. And at the other end, um, the other side the other half of the arrangement is the output. The red wire here that leads to the output B and C, right? And away you go um, to your radio. So antenna antenna in radio out out to the radio um, I did a, cu a couple of, well I uh, sanded off the paint all around this lip and inside as well hard to see probably but in here and here and then just to pr for some corrosion protection I actually laid down uh, I kind of wetted it I guess with solder um, against the freshly exposed steel I imagine this would be and just to try to stop it from uh, corroding and making good connection so when it closes it actually sort of is a complete shield you know there's a ground shield around the whole unit so that's it, it says made in Canada and it was actually made in Canada again it's twice made in Canada, this new thing and the, the original box. And that's it. So those are parts that I salvaged out of a out of a radio that was no longer uh, working. And uh, I've been planning on doing this for, for quite a while. It's a simple enough project. I mean, it's, it takes time because I had you know, you're drilling holes and measuring. You know, I have to line up the, the brackets for this ceramic coil form. There's two a screw here and then there's a screw on the back so you have to kind of measure that out and figure out where those go and this uh, there's actually three there are actually three screws in a triangular shape plus a hole in the center for the shaft for the tuning so that all had to be measured and then of course drilling a hole for the for the rotor the switch and uh, a couple of holes for the BNCs, 
and um, I did my favorite method which is I didn't screw these down I soldered them to the again just and they're very strong very good connection but you do have to be careful because the dielectric the inside dielectric material can I don't think it happened in for me yet uh, in the different times I've done this but I believe it could happen if you were to be you know maybe just a little too much heat um, for too long you can melt that stuff and that would probably degrade the performance of the uh, those connectors and you don't want that um, but yeah that's that's it that's the actually turned out pretty uh, pretty well I think it looks pretty clean in there a little bit of flux drop down in there I can clean out when I get around to it but I mean that's it that's an antenna tuner and uh, what's the idea of it? so you know for those of you who maybe don't fully kind of understand that what the antenna tuner is for um, essentially it's just to keep your radio happy um, so that your radio sees the correct impedance and because uh, sometimes you can with certain designs most radios have protection against this kind of thing but you can damage a radio if you uh, you know if there's a gross mismatch and uh, you're getting a lot of reflected energy coming back you know hitting the end where the load is the antenna part but it's not you know it's not matched properly so it just reflects back down the cable and just it's not good um, it doesn't make your antenna work better it is what it is it just makes your radio happy to work with the antenna you've got so I have an antenna right now that's a dipole um, and it's cut for 20 meters I should be able to fairly well use it on 40 probably 10 should be another good one except I don't have a radio that transmits on 10 meters um, you know but this thing should I imagine would like I mentioned with a number of taps this came out of a radio that went covered 160 to, to 10 meter um, so probably more or less that's all here um, that's quite a range I wouldn't expect to be transmitting on 160 on a 20 meter dipole at least not very effectively but maybe this thing would match it you know so of course another question is well there's no um, there's no uh, VU meter there's no uh, you know any way to tell if this thing is matching or where it's at or what the SWR is or how much power like that's a little more advanced build I have another way of doing that my own means maybe I'll make a separate video uh, showing that process it's very simple but uh, you know um, we'll see this thing in action and I'll show you how I do it with my little QRP rig um, so this is QRP these are more than adequate um, components for that kind of application and uh, yeah so that's it that's that's a that's a build you know Drill a bunch of holes, line them up, measure them, make sure they're the right place where you want them, and clean up all the burrs because I'm using those step bit drill bits, they leave a lot of burrs on the inside as you're going through. So you can use a file and whatever means you you find uh, appropriate to clean the burrs up on the other side. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's what you need: a coil, tuning condenser. In this case, a switch is handy so that you can use the different taps that are available. You could build one of these for just one, um, you know, one band. That's another option. You don't have to have a variable band, but this will be a little bit more multi-purpose. Anyway, so that's that. That's the end of that video. Thanks for watching. Hope you all is well. Bye for now.